Hi everybody, Rick Donovan here. Today I want to talk about a subject that is really, really exciting. And that is how to collect a check bigger than your head. That is pricing for the big one. How do you do that? People ask me, they say, Donovan, you know, and if you've seen me speak before, you know that like we've gotten orders that are 10, 20 higher, $1,000. And it's like, how do you do that, Donovan? Well, today I'm going to talk about it a little, a little bit, all right? In fact, I'm going to give you 10 steps to getting there. Now, I didn't always collect $10,000 checks. In fact, there was a time when I thought running a $100 average was pretty darn good, okay? Then I didn't realize there was a whole lot more. I was killing myself doing 35 clients a day trying to make a living doing that and running a studio and paying for lights and overhead and all that stuff realizing I was just making a couple of pennies on the dollar for everything that I sold. It was almost all for naught. Well, there's a whole different op opening there for you and I'm hoping that you're going to see that today. You can see something maybe you just didn't know even existed. And you know that if it does exist and if somebody else is doing it, if I'm doing it and my, my peers are doing it, that means you can do it too. That's the fun part. It's like, hey, if it's being done, that means it's possible. Possible. If it's possible, that means it's possible for you. That's the crazy thing. Some, some people will, will accuse me and say, well, Donovan, you live in the right area, so people can come in there and they can spend five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars because of where you live. Uh, or maybe you have some superpowers. I'm super uh, tall or good looking. No, none of those things are true. I'm not articulate. And if you know some of my history, I'm not particularly the uh, sharpest tool in the shed. It doesn't matter who you are, what your abilities are, what matters is implementation. And I'm going to give you some steps that you can implement, all right? Uh, please, when I hear think, people say, well, I can't do that in my area, those are excuses, okay? I don't want to hear them because I have worked with people from all over the country and it works no matter where you are. These steps work. The system works. When I learned to implement the system, I went from a $100 average uh, up to around a $2,000 average back in the 80s. And 2000 back in the 80s, hey, that's not what it is today. It's a lot different. That was a lot of money back then. It was wonderful. I couldn't believe it. My friends were astounded. Now, a little caveat here. I'm not guaranteeing anything. It's, I think it's illegal to do that. But I am saying that there is a system and there are people out there doing it and you should be one of them. That's how I feel about it. Um, don't worry about where you live. Don't worry about the people in your area. Don't worry about your peers. In fact, part of the caveat that I wanted to explain to you is if you have, let's say your, your average order right now is $1,000. Uh, if you have that, that breakthrough of a $5,000 order, a $10,000, whatever it is, something that just seems to you incredible, um, two things. I want you to let me know about it. I would love to hear from you and celebrate with you. I get so excited when I hear about photographers having breaking this glass ceiling that's been made out there. Also, be careful who you do tell. It was experience. I was uh, doing about a $2,000 average, remember? I was really excited about that and I was like pretty jazzed about it. One day somebody came in and they dropped $5,000. This is uh, 1994. $5,000. I thought, wow, that is incredible. I have to celebrate. Took my wife out to dinner. I went to visit one of my friends, who another photographer. I told him, I just had a $5,000 order. Pretty proud of myself. I thought he pat me on the back and he was really quiet. And a few minutes later, he just looked at me, turned sideways and he goes, you're ripping people off. Wow, <laughs> so much for you know, being cheered on. Uh, not much of a motivation speech. I encourage you, do the system, be careful who you tell, but celebrate. Celebrate with your clients. You're doing something that is for them. You have to do this all, of course, with a heart of integrity, and that's really important as well. You don't ever want to be accused of ripping somebody off. Here's the question that you do need to ask yourself. If somebody came into your studio and they had $20,000 to burn, would you be able to sell them something? Would it, would it, could you do it? The answer for most photographers is no. It, it's like, well, what would I give them for 20 grand? Pretty much, I'd have to give them one of my children, you know, my cat, my dog, everything, it's gone. 
you, you need, that's the first thing. You need to understand that people are coming into your studio now who have discretionary income. They may be spending a very low dollar amount. They may be spending something that you feel is pretty high. But remember, you are not your client. It doesn't matter what you think is high. It doesn't matter what you think is a big order or a small order. What matters is what your client's perception is. That is what counts. So as far as actual dollar amounts go, get out of your head any thinking that you have, any poverty mentality I, I've heard it called where you're thinking, well, that's just too much. I'd never spend that. Well, it's, it's not about you. It's about your client. You're, you're providing something for your client that nobody else can. And so they'd be happy to make that kind of investment. And if they have a certain amount of money that they want to invest, will they be able to do it in your studio? That's the question you have to ask yourself. I have a friend here, if you had $500, you could buy his camera. I mean, <laughs> that's, all, that's all you could spend in his studio. And I don't want that to be the case with you. So we're going to prepare you here, OK? Just a little more reassurance for those of you who are, who are still in doubt. The old, this won't work in my area. I have a friend uh, who, a student, client, friend, he went from selling little $8 keychains in a small town to selling multi-thousand dollar portrait, portraits, uh, wall portraits, uh, amazing. The results can be astounding. This is very exciting stuff. And it's funny, people say, well, I have to wait. Again, excuses. I want to wait until I'm really, really good. I have to have my degree, uh, my CPP. I have to be approved by my peers. What? Get out of town. I'm not saying you don't have to be a good photographer and you should never stop trying to be your very best in creating art. But it's not about how good you think you are. It's not about how, about how good you think um, anyone else is or how good I think you are. It's how good your clients think you are. That is all that counts. Your clients probably love you. And they think you're amazing. And who are you to argue with them? Remember, the customer is always right. So if they think you're fantastic, they are right. Um, so let's get right now into this system. There's something you need to know up front. This system require, doesn't require a lot of intelligence or schooling or anything else. It does require a little bit of a backbone. Okay, So you, got, you have, to have to have some guts to do this. Uh, and you get past the fears. And the things that hold us back, you can do practically anything, all right? You'll be doing videos pretty soon. First thing you have to do is gain their trust. Get to know them. It's like you're being friends with them. It's, part, it's a relationship. This is something that's a one-on-one. -on -one. You have to genuinely care about your clients and what's best for them, all right? That is really, really important. If you feel like you're ripping them off, you can't do this. Me, what I've learned by talking to my clients over the many years I've been doing this is that they value their family portraits more than anything they own. And that encourages me. And if you've seen some, some of my other videos, you know that when you ask your clients about the value uh, year, a year later, you'll understand that it's worth way more than what you sold it to them for. So that's very, very encouraging. You have to believe in your product. You have to uh, get your clients to trust you. You have to really feel like what you're doing for them is what is best for them, all right? So get to know them, be genuine, be authentic, be a trustworthy person. Treat them like you would your own family member, somebody that you really, really care a lot about. Number two, pre-visualize your order based on what is best for those clients of yours, not based on money. Gee, um, I want them to have this, but that's too expensive. They wouldn't get that. No, no, get the money part out completely. Okay, what if it were free? What if what you were, you were a multimillionaire and you did photography for fun and you were able to give it to people benevolently, easy for me to say, what, how would that look? Uh, what would you give them? If you could give somebody anything you wanted to that you thought would enhance and, and make their life better, what would you give them? Visualize that. So when those people come into your studio, when your clients walk into your studio, you've already got a vision in your head of what you think is going to be best for them. I do this 
with my clients. A visualize, generally it's a one or two wall portraits in an album, generally. Not everybody, it's not appropriate for everybody, but it, it's something that I know that most people are gonna really, really treasure. Number three, price your work so you, to make it easy for people to buy big. Don't be cheap, all right? I mean, if somebody wanted to spend, if they want, then people, here's the other thing is, just as a little side note, you cannot believe how much people will spend on something or invest in something that they really, really and truly value. Uh, so don't undervalue your work, don't be cheap. Uh, people will spend money on what they want. There are people who uh, spend thousands of dollars a year on things that you think are absolutely ridiculous, but it's what they want, okay? so. Price your work anyway, price your work so that they can make that investment. Uh, people aren't going to generally, generally, uh, making an assumption here, uh, buy 108 by 10s to get you to that order, uh, that size that you want to get up to. You need to have something priced appropriately so that if they had seven or eight thousand dollars, let's say, they can get one image for that. So have something in your repertoire. Uh, that is at least double that price, so that makes the seven or eight thousand dollar portrait look a lot more affordable. I have a twenty-five thousand dollar portrait. I actually have a fifty thousand dollar portrait. If somebody wanted to buy that, they could. I could sell one portrait, hit a fifty grand uh, order, and I would be very happy, and so would the client. So, have something that's outrageously priced. Uh, in there and but have your other prices set so that they can make it easy for the client to make that investment. Uh, number four, don't lead, don't push your client, lead them. You want to pull your client or lead your client down the direction that you really feel is best for them. Don't be pushy, don't tell them that they have to get this, don't, don't be the high pressure salesman. Just take it easy and ask them how do you feel about that. I use that term a lot. How do you feel about that? Well. They say, well, I'm kind of uncomfortable with that. And I go, okay, you don't have to do that. What makes you uncomfortable, I might ask. You know, just ask questions. Uh, but lead them into making a decision that's right for them. If you push somebody, they're going to resent you, and they're going to think you're pushy, and they're going to write bad reviews of you on Yelp. Boy, is that a place to go. So you want to lead them down the path to happiness. You can do that because you're good. Uh, have a nobody would ever buy that product, like I was talking about earlier, that they price it so high that they would have to be insane to actually buy that. You, something that is so crazy and priced so ridiculous that if they bought it, <clears throat> you, you'd go crazy yourself. So have, I have my $50,000 portrait, and I also have a $40,000 session fee. Uh, for certain types of sessions. So imagine one session fee and one, oh, wow, wouldn't that make my day? That make my year, I think. Have something crazy and ridiculous and let, let somehow let the clients know that that's available so that when they come into your studio and they see your new price list, they see your new prices or hear your new prices, we'll talk about price list in a minute, they're not um, so incredibly shocked at the prices uh, of the portraits that are more probably appropriate for their homes. So have that crazy, insane price and maybe one or two at that range that just seems ridiculous. Uh, don't show anything that you don't want to sell. You don't want them to buy. Get rid, you know, if somebody came into your studio and they see you eight by 10 on the wall and they go, hey, I want that. Would that make your day? Maybe if your eight by 10 was $5,000 it might, but for most of us, including me, it's not, not yet. So only show what you want to sell. I have a 72 inch on my wall and the smallest portrait that I have on my wall is a 40 inch. The smallest portrait that I show my clients is a 34 inch. I recommend getting a 34, 36 right in there and I have it on an easel because it's so small it's not even worthy of being on the wall. Have something that is that you want your clients to make that investment in. If they bought my small one, if they made that investment into that, that would make me happy. That would just about hit my average and I'd be pleased with that. So 
That's the smallest thing that I show. If they want to see what a 5x7 or an 8x10 or 11x14 looks like, I have little uh, plaques <laughs> on the wall and I point to the plaque. I said, you know, it's about that size where I show them a piece of paper. Uh, eight by ten is about like this, a tiny bit smaller. Makes it makes it sound very insignificant. I'm all about wall portraits. Uh, don't be, and I already mentioned this a little while ago. Um, don't wait until you think you are good enough. Don't wait until your peers give you their approval. Your peers aren't paying your bills, okay? Your clients are. Now, you, all, you, all you need is your client's approval. And your clients give their approval by giving you a check. That's how they show how much they appreciate you. If anyone has ever given you a check before for your work, that means that they appreciate you. So that's all the approval that you need. And it's all the permission that you need as well. Um, another thing is be confident. Number eight, be confident. When you, you may be scared to death, and believe me, when somebody comes into my studio and they drop um, 10, 15, 20, $30,000, it, inside, I'm panicking. I mean, I still do this to this day. I still think, oh, wow, you know, um, I hope I don't screw this up. <laughs> so, yes, I s suffer from a lack of confidence sometimes. However, I never show that to my client. I have learned to be somewhat of an actor, okay, and you have to be in this business. I, I completely show confidence without being cocky or arrogant, but I'm confident. I am calm in my voice, and when I present my prices, I present them in a way where my voice is calm, and it's a matter of the fact. This is our $25,000 portrait. This one here is 12, and I don't go, you know, well, this one's kind of expensive. I don't know, you know, I don't do that because th that lacks confidence. It, it cuts right to the core of, of your sale, and it, it can really, really hurt. And the client picks up on that. The client has to believe that you believe in what you do. So be confident, to be calm, be proud when presenting your, your new pricing. You're, you will more than likely still be way less than you should be. That's the funny thing is <laughs> where your prices are right now, uh, most of us are way less than we should be. And when we raise them, we're still way less than we should be. And, so we think it's really expensive because we're looking at it through our, our brain, our eyes, and we're thinking, gee, I couldn't afford that. And remember, you're not your client, so it's not about what you can afford. It's about servicing your client and giving them the very best. Interesting side note, the more you charge, the better photographer you become by default. All right, that was number eight. Number nine, um, secret here? Ask for the sale. That's how you get the big orders, is you ask for it. You present it, and then you ask for it. If you're not presenting, and you're not asking for the sales, if you guide them right to the little ones, uh, or the smaller orders, that's what they're gonna get. People will trust you, okay? If you've gained their trust, they trust your recommendations. They may not, not always take it, but they do trust what you're saying. Ask for the sale. The answer is always no if you don't ask. So if I get somebody up to a certain point, I'll say, um, you know, that's, that's 15 grand. How does that feel? You want me to write that down? Oh, you know, I just, uh, if they hesitate, great, no problem. Let's drop. I'll drop down. But I, I wait a little while before I go down. Suggest you do the same. Don't drop immediately and don't drop a long ways. Drop by increments, okay? Because you don't know where that sweet spot is for this client. Number 10. Give them permission. Make it normal. Act as if everybody does this. This is a little bit of the actor I was talking about earlier. You need to act as though everybody always does this. It's very commonplace. Oh yeah, 10,000, 20,000, oh, that's no problem. Everybody does that, um, big deal. It's just, it's just numbers. That's all it is to these people. As long as they see the value in it, those numbers, they match that value, it's no problem at all. And that's a whole nother seminar. Uh, they have, they have to know that it's okay to do. Your client needs to know that it's 
fine, that it's normal, that it's acceptable. They don't want to be considered a fool or a freak for getting something they shouldn't get. They don't, they don't want to be ridiculed for that. In fact, you want them to go away proud. And that, interestingly enough, the more they invest in your work, the more proud they are to say, hey, this guy did my portraits. The more proud they are to show it to all their friends because it was a large investment. Ever know anybody who bought a brand new car? Did they just casually drive up and never mention it? No, they come up and they go, hey, you see my new car? You know, they're excited. All right, same concept. When people make a large investment, and that's a relative term, let's just call it large, they're excited about it and they brag about it, okay? Here's a bonus one for you, number uh, 10 and a half, <laughs> is don't hand them a price list. Do not post your prices online. Don't make it common knowledge, all right? It's a huge mistake that a lot of people are making and it can completely blow your clients away. It, it, take them, yeah, they're just not, it's not a good idea. I've done it all different ways. I posted things online. I've had uh, my price list just, just handed to them and send them home with proofs. None of that stuff works. The most successful people in the photography industry who are doing portraits never show a price list. I have one sitting next to my desk and I showed it just the other day for the first time in probably a decade to somebody. And they still bought. <laughs> but it was because of the timing. Uh, when you present your prices, learn your prices, memorize them, know your pricing by heart, make it easy for yourself to memorize your prices so that you can you know this size is this and this and this. Then simply tell your client what it is. This is this much. And say it, oh, by the way, a little extra bonus again on this one is when you present a price, Never end with a number. Say, this is our uh, $5,000 portrait and it's all hand done and stretched on natural fiber canvas. So, so you're not ending with, this is $5,000. Because wherever you pause, that is what sticks in their memory. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want that number to be stuck because now that switches them over to the left brain. They're thinking logically. They're thinking, gee, I've got a boat I want to buy or a trip to Europe I want to take. And I just, I just out of my budget. And, and it's, it ticks me off when I have a client come in and ace me or get very, very little and then tell me about their trip to Europe. I mean, to me, that's... Uh, yeah, we all have our priorities. I guess that's fine. But I would much rather, if as a dad, see my family displayed proudly on my wall then take a trip to Europe. Uh, so those are ten and a half uh, steps to creating larger orders, preparing for that really, really big one. And remember, those clients, I promise you, you're having people come into your studio who can do that. That's the complaint or the, the objection I get all the time is we don't have those kind of clients who have that kind of money. I've been all across the United States and I have not seen different kinds of money anywhere I've ever been. It's all the same. So that money, people will buy what they want. It's a matter of presenting it to them and allowing them, giving them permission letting them make that pur purchase, make it an, uh, an investment that's easy for them to do. Follow these steps and I wish you great success.